Hi, this is Christopher with Zebra Zaps. I'd like to introduce you to the answer table. Our first scenario is a multiple select question with delayed feedback. Let's take a minute or so to set up our question. I'm creating six checkboxes and I'm going to use their label as the answer. So from a text file, I'm selecting the answer and just pasting it into the label. We'll do this a few times. Okay, now that I've got my checkboxes all labeled, I'm going to take a second here to just arrange the page with my correct answers over on the left and the wrong answers over on the right. And while I'm authoring, this will be, be really helpful to be able to see the two different groups. The final portion of the setup here is I need to create a submit button. If you notice underneath the question here, what are the advantages of a diesel engine? Select all that apply. I'm going to give feedback once the user uh, has made their, their final selections and, and chosen several different checkboxes. So we'll place our submit button over here on the right. It's time to take a look at using the answer table. To create one, select the answer table icon from the toolbox and click anywhere on the screen. It's very similar to the truth table, uh, but has some very unique differences in the way that you create logic. We're gonna start by wiring up our checkboxes. And just to make it easy, we're gonna wire up the four correct answers first, and the two incorrect answers last, and this will help create our pattern. And with each item that I'm wiring up, each one of the checkboxes, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more detail on each of the logic rows as it's wired in so I can remember which checkbox each row refers to. And you may notice if you've used a truth table before that each time I add a checkbox to the answer table, I'm not gaining additional conditions. As soon as we finish wiring up these last two more checkboxes, I'll show you how to use the answer table to create custom conditions. I'd first like to call your attention to column number one and all of the green cells. The green cells are where we create conditions for each one of our columns, and you can think of each one of the columns as different states that the user can put your application into. By clicking either the left or the right hand side of the cell, you create a condition. On the left hand side of the cell, clicking and typing a number will create an ordered condition, and clicking on the right hand cell for either a check mark or an X will create a completion condition. A check being, did the user complete this step? And an X being, make sure that the user has not completed this step. So I've gone through, and number one through four, less fuel, no plug wires, longer lasting fryer oil. Those are all true responses to the select all that apply. And then the two that are I labeled with an F, I've put X's in because I want to make sure that my user has not checked those checkboxes. So column number one, we've set up in the most correct answer. The additional remaining columns, we're going to set up a condition just for each answer so that we can display feedback. Let's run it and see how this works. You notice that column number two is all green and this is pretty important because not only is it all green but it's highlighted white at the top to say column number two is selected. An empty cell will always be selected as true. Furthermore, cells that are green will always be, if they're currently green, always be chosen as true. So you can see what is currently matched in your application. I'm going to set up a little wiring test here with an oval and show my oval when column number two has been matched. You can see that the moment I run it, 
the oval doesn't show because column number two is selected even before we start running our application, so it's not going to fire. So what we can do is wire up our submit button to judge now here at the very bottom of the table. And you notice that column number two is no longer highlighted. When I hit the submit button, the table will look for the first column that matches completely from left to right. So now our oval will show when I hit the submit button. No rows have a condition in it. So the moment I hit the submit button, it's going to fire condition number two. So essentially we're looking for a column that's going to light up completely green. For an additional test, I'm going to wire up column number three to zoom the oval. I really want to hit home how columns fire. And we'll zoom our oval up by 125%. And we should see a noticeable difference when we hit column number two. I hit submit, it stops at column number two because it's got a pause branching type, which can be changed to continue. And continue will say, if I match on column number two, fire it out, do all of its values, and then move on to the next column that matches. Here column number two and three are without any condition. So they're all highlighted green even before we start running our application. And when I hit submit, you'll notice very briefly at the top, column number two and three become highlighted. We're gonna take advantage of continue branching in the answer table to provide some very specific feedback for each one of the checkboxes that our user can enter. Let's go ahead and create our conditions for each one of the columns. And each of these conditions are going to be set up for if I were to get the wrong answer or inappropriately choose one of the, the checkboxes. Here are the responses. I've got them sitting in a text file. And so now I need to create the column conditions that get me the wrong answer. So I'm going to go through here and put X's. So explicitly, the user has not chosen each one of the correct checkboxes in columns one through four. All those columns are completely green because at the start state of this interaction, nothing is selected. The last two, which are incorrect, I'm putting in check marks to say that the user has chosen those. And we're going to have continue branching in columns two through seven. This way it will fire uh, out our responses or feedback for when they get each one of those answer types wrong. So what we'll do is we'll take the responses and just paste them right over the top of our labels by creating a text object. And this text object will be set to hide on run. To style it, I'm going to give it a fill opacity of 100%. We'll maybe give it a background of a, a reddish color. And I'm going to turn auto size uh, to false on my text object so that I can um, make sure to cover all of the label text from the checkboxes with the response text. So I'll just pasting that in there making sure I'm over the appropriate checkbox and I'm just going to make it taller, maybe a little narrow and um, we also could align the text to be centered. Perfect. So now we want to show this text or the negative feedback if after they hit the submit button they have not chosen this checkbox. So if they didn't choose that checkbox, we want to show that text. I've changed my wiring level here because I'm going to be doing um, a lot of different work from the table. I don't need to see all the wires. Okay, so now we need a, uh, some feedback.
We'll copy in the feedback if they had not chosen the second checkbox. And we'll place this over. And now we just need to rewire uh, the show ribbon to column number three in our table. So I'll select both objects and just rewire because I did a copy paste from the first text object. We're going to repeat this now um, four more times. Okay, we're just about done. We need to wire up our last two feedbacks here for the incorrect answers. Now that we're set up, let's go ahead and run our project. I've got the table still showing. Let's see how this works. If I just hit the submit button, the four correct answers will all show their feedback to let me know that I got them incorrect. To get the two incorrect answers, of course, I would need to select those checkboxes. Uh, and we can see as we kind of debug using the answer table that those two selections were not made. Those columns didn't turn completely green. And as I make the selections, you can see everything turns up green, and now I get everything wrong. Essentially not choosing the four correct answers and choosing the two incorrect answers. Watching the table the way that it performs and what cells turn green is a really important concept when uh, creating interactivity with the answer table and something that you'll find extraordinarily useful. Let's create a, a little bit of feedback for the very first column or you have gotten all of the answers correct. We'll just put a little text on the screen, bump up its font size, and again, this is going to be something set to hide on run, and we're going to show it when column number one is matched. Hide on run, and let's run it. So I need to get the four answers, which are correct, all lit up. Column number one will be the only column that's all green, as you can see. And when we hit submit, column number one highlights and our perfect text appears. So this pattern here where column number one is all correct and two through seven are the individual feedbacks for each one of the multi-select um, checkboxes, you can have very stylized and very specific feedback for uh, your students or learners based on which combination of things that they choose. I hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful and good luck as you start creating your own interactivity using the answer table.